Welcome back, everybody, to Maria's Fine Wines. Today we're talking about port, and Maria here is going to give you um, a bit of a history lesson as far as port's concerned, and then I'm going to finish off with the different ports and what they all are. So, go ahead. <laughs> Hi. Do you know that uh, Portugal is one of the oldest wine-growing countries in Europe, mm. which Europe is by itself the oldest wine-growing continent? And uh, this were the wines were first introduced there by the Phoenicians. Then, uh, uh, to uh, the second century BC, they, uh, the Romans were already cultivating wines there. And ever since then, because it's a, a seaside nation, of course, like uh, they are uh, selling the port, uh, selling the wines all over. Uh, England was their best customers, where they traded the wines for salt cod and um, the Vino Verde wine, the white wines. There was one problem though, you know, by the time the, uh, the wine bottles made it finally to England, many of them spoiled on the treacherous mm. sea fail. Uh, so there were the English merchants who started to look for another way to bring wines to England, and uh, two gentlemen from London traveled up on the Douro River to a, a monastery, Lameda, and they found that the uh, monks at uh, Alameda, they were blending some uh, uh, spirits, uh, some grape uh, spirits like into, the wine, into the wine, and that made it longer lasting and delicious tasting. So from there on, they decided that's how we're going to do it. And sure enough, the wine made it well to England, and that's how port came to life. Um, then in the 18th century, uh, the Prime Minister of Portugal decided, okay, we'll uh, seclude this area only where the best wines are made, and this was the, this became the first uh, quality controlled region, uh, wine region in Europe. So there are many different kinds of ports, and Christina will tell you about them. Okay, so first um, we'll start with vintage ports. Okay, um, they are selected by only the best years and the best vintages, which is typically decided in the spring of the second year, and that's when they can tell whether it's been a good vintage or not, and it's put into barrels for two to three years and aged anywhere from 10 to 40 years. Okay, then we have crusted ports, which is this one here, and this is a blend of several different vintages, and it's an unfiltered, so it's good to decant it, because you're going to get a lot of sediment on the bottom, but you're going to get a lot of flavor, it's going to get a lot of flavor in the bottle, age, get a lot of depth, a lot of character, all that good stuff, so if you're looking for something a little bit more hearty, this is definitely the way to go. And then we have the cojita, which is a single vineyard port, so all the grapes are sourced from one vineyard, they're not sourced from anywhere else, usually they use single varietals, things like that, and it's aged for a minimum of seven years. Typically a little bit more expensive just because they don't source out, so they use more specialized, exclusive grape varietals. And then we have the ruby ports. Um, do we have a ruby port here today? Big this one here? Seven. This one here? That one? All right, so the ruby port are a young fruity style blend, which are inexpensive, just really delicious. So if you want a port style, but you don't want to spend sort of up and around 80 to like $200, this is a great way to go. 20, yeah, 20, 20, 30 yeah. bucks. And for the vintage ports, um, the vintage character ports are a mix of young ports aged three to four years, and maybe uh, more complex, a little bit more full-bodied, so those are a good way to go as well. And then we have LBV ports, which stands for late the bottle vintage. Common, yeah. yeah, the most common, what you're typically going to see on the shelves. Late bottle vintages produced only in the most exceptional years, so that's also good, so you get a little bit more of a high quality bottle there. Yeah, the one that couldn't quite make it to the vintage, <laughs> but it's almost the vintage. Almost, <laughs> almost good enough. And then you get about aging of five to seven years on that, and Typically, they can be filtered or unfiltered. Then we have um, tawny ports, which are amber in color. And those are just really light, easy drinking. You get a little bit more of those raisiny notes to it. They touch barrel for a couple of years in the bottle, but just usually ready to go. So those are those typical ones right there. And just really nice, easy drinking if you like something that's a little bit more mild. And, the aged. and then we have the aged tawnies. 
So these are different vintages, anywhere from 10, 20, 30, 40 years, which is aged in the barrel. Yeah. Aged in the barrel, put in the bottle, and it's indicated on the bottle how old they are, and they range anywhere from price. And these are typically what you're going to see on your shelves. And then last but not least, we have the rosé ports, which is not something that you see commonly, but they're good for cocktails, nice, easy drinking, not too much, not too complicated. They have short contact with the skin, so you get a little bit of more rosé color and just really delightful and delicious. So there you have it. That's your port seminar for the day. Hopefully we'll see you soon.